Welcome to RC Scientific. In this video we explain dynamic torque twist and how it can be minimized. There are two different kinds of torque twist. First, there is static torque twist that occurs during very slow movement. And second, there is dynamic torque twist that occurs only during phases of acceleration. Here we focus only on the dynamic one. How does it arise? The motor accelerates the car in driving direction. But the motor torque generates also a reaction torque in the frontal plane. This is a simple action-reaction phenomenon. Stepping on a lightweight boat makes the boat move backwards. Rotating on it makes us rotate in the opposite direction. The same happens with the chassis and body when the motor starts to rotate. This effect is called dynamic torque twist. There are many different ways to minimize it. One can increase mass and size of the car, or downsize motor, change motor placement, or increase spring stiffness, increase damper viscosity, or increase shock distance. Let's go into detail. The magnitude of the dynamic torque twist depends on the properties of the accelerating components along the drivetrain. Only those units contribute that have their rotating axis in drive direction, such as the motor itself, the transmission gears and the drive shafts. All of these components have their own moments of inertia and rotational speeds. The moments of inertia can be roughly estimated when knowing the masses and geometries of the rotating parts. The torque twist is a function of these moments of inertia and their corresponding angular accelerations. As the moment of inertia and rotational accelerations at the transmission and at the drive shaft are clearly smaller than at the motor, we can simplify the torque twist equation. This resulting formula can be validated with a vertically hanging chassis. The motor acceleration is inducing a counter movement of the chassis. The rotational acceleration of the chassis can be computed knowing the moments of inertia and the acceleration of the motor. We did the validation with one of our 1 to 10 crawlers, the Traxxas TRX4 Defender. After demounting wheels and body, we could measure the mass and the main dimensions of the chassis that carry the mass. With these values we could determine the moment of inertia of the chassis. But how can we get the rotational acceleration of the motor? For this we built a lightweight fake wheel that allowed us to count the number of revolutions per second and use this value to determine angular speed and acceleration. The angles were measured at the screen and plotted versus time. The maximum speed could be derived from the slope of the plots. Knowing the radius of the wheels, we can easily compute the maximum speed of the car if it would go on even terrain without any further counter forces. The values for the first and second gear correspond well with the values known for this Traxxas model. The frequency of the motor can be computed from the measured frequencies at the wheel axis, knowing the overall gear ratios at first and second gear. As expected, the values for the motor are about the same. 
the angular speed can be computed from the motor frequency. How do we get the accelerations out of the speeds? The temporal pattern of angular speed can be plotted from the measurements. Then the angular accelerations can be approximated after linearizing the speed curves. Now we can insert the missing variable into the equation and derive the frequency of the hanging chassis. By the way, frequency means the same as the value of revolutions per time. We validated the computational model with a chassis experiment. In this experiment, we measured the time required for one 360 degree revolution after accelerating the motor. Finally, we could show that the calculated frequency corresponds well with the measured ones. To minimize the amount of dynamic torque twist, we have to distinguish two different phases. Phase A is the beginning of the motor acceleration when the car just starts to tilt. This tilting movement is against the car's inertia and viscous forces coming from the shocks and can be expressed by an equation. Based on this equation, we can analyze how to change the parameters in order to minimize torque twist. Torque twist can be reduced by several ways. First, by increasing the mass and or size of all the parts located above the springs. Second, by reducing the moment of inertia of the motor. Or third, by changing the motor orientation. For example, a second motor could be inserted that rotates into opposite direction to cancel out the large momentum of the accelerating motor. Or the motor could be turned, so that the axis is perpendicular to the drive direction. Fourth, by reducing the maximum motor speed, for example by choosing a motor with a higher number of turns, or fifth, by increasing the acceleration time, sixth, by a damper oil with a higher viscosity, and seventh, by increasing the lateral distance between the dampers. The second phase B is at the end of the motor acceleration phase, when the torque twist already tilted the car to its maximum angle against the forces generated by the springs. Assuming a static, stationary condition, the torque generated by the springs can be expressed as a function of spring distance, spring stiffness and spring deflection. After some transformation we can express the tilting angle phi as a function of the relevant parameters. The torque twist expressed by the tilting angle phi for this static condition can be further reduced by 8th increasing spring rate c or 9th by blocking spring deflection and 10th by increasing the lateral distance between the springs. Thanks for watching RC Scientific.